Hi, everyone. I've got um, Yolanda, who is the trained emotional coach. Yolanda, thank you so much for joining me. Oh, always a pleasure to join you, Rina. I love chatting with you. I love, I love you. I love doing <laughs> thank anything. You. You. Thank me. you. Thank you. Ask me, here. I will be here. Yes, because any questions, you know, when I talk to you, you just calm me down. Because there are so many people who are going through anxiety and depression, especially in, right now, the youngsters. And it, it amazes me, is it because the way they have been brought up or is it because of the society? What would you say? So anxiety and depression, or more like we're talking about anxiety today, is what's there in all of us. That's why we have a human experience, mm -hmm. is, um, and it is anxiety. Uh, and current times, with what social media is doing to our youngsters and what uh, COVID is doing and bringing up so much anxiety within families, within, within people, is, is really nothing but challenging us to step up, step up our human game. Mm -hmm. So it's always there. It's always been there. These are just external circumstances that are, that are uh, showing a mirror to where we are at and asking us to raise ourselves up. It's really not a challenge. It's unless we choose to see it as a challenge. Okay. Every challenge is an opportunity. So um, a child is raised. I can give your example, Yolanda. We were just talking about, uh, you know, anxious parents. So if you can give a bit of insight on that. Lovely. So I used to be a very anxious parent. I used to say I, I'm very calm now and, I, and I, I, I have that effect to calm people who ever come in touch with me. And that's because my anxiety has been that gift. And everyone, you have that gift too. We all have that gift to, to turn anxiety on its head. And the other side, on the flip side of the, of the coin of anxiety or chaos is calm. So we wouldn't be feeling anxious if we didn't have this power to experience calm mm -hmm. so that's been my journey too I was a very anxious spirit a very anxious person but I didn't know any different it's how I was raised it's what society taught me it's what culture community if you needed to achieve anything it's all about achievement yeah. you have to achieve in order to be something and recognize our self-worth and it's so instilled and ingrained with us. And the tool that we feel we have to get there is when we are anxious. So it mm. serves us. Being yeah. anxious pushes us to do things, to do more. We, are, we become anxious. We feel overwhelmed. Competitive. These are all choices. Competitive? Are competitive, yeah. We have to be better. The only thing person we're trying to be better is, is better than our own selves. So your parents, no else, parents really. were, yeah, your parents were anxious parents. So as a parent, I was very anxious and I was oh. able in this work to see, and I see this, this is, um, I was only modeling. I didn't know we're always doing, parents are always doing the absolute best at all times, given the knowledge they know, which is why this work that I do, Empowered Parenting, is giving parents new knowledge so they can truly be a best self from a new understanding of what that is with new knowledge. Mm -hmm. Until we receive that new knowledge, we are operating with what we already know. We're doing our best given what we know and what we know is what our parents did. And our parents going back generationally are also doing the best that they knew. So we need to let go of judgment to, oh, my parents taught me this. And the most important judgment we really need to let go of is judgment of our own selves and beating our own selves up and feeling guilt of, oh my God, I'm not a good enough parent. Oh my God, I'm messing my kids up. So really stepping out of all of that is recognizing. In my case, I saw where my parents modeled, uh, modeled anxiety to me, my mom specifically, how she was raised and it served her. It gave her what she needed. She became, her need for significance, her need for love, connection was met through her anxious behaviors in our, in, in our family home growing up. And I said, and subconsciously, and again, it's not conscious, subconsciously, I decided, oh my God, this is how to do it. This is how my mom did it. This is how she met her needs. This is how I'm going to do it. And then I realized, oh my God, my kids are not responding how I responded to my kids, to my parents. I, 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 was, I, I listened, I, I, I followed through. My kids are saying, no, why? They're questioning. And that's when we start to question our own self. No, why? Why am I behaving like this? 
So that's the questioning. So our kids are not, it's not about the kids, it's about us. We need to start questioning ourselves and change our own behavior. And then we let go. So this is what allowed me to, because I could see it in my kids. That's why parenting is such a beautiful journey because we are so committed to our journey as parents. So let's use the and see the opportunities, not by making, getting our kids to change their behaviors. Yes, they do change their behaviors. And yes, we need to put strategies, which is what we teach. We teach two parts. We do empowered parenting is about power within the parents and the powerful tools we give our parents. So it's equal, but we forget, often parents forget where we need to take ownership, where we need to perceive our kids' behavior as opportunities for ourselves. So in my own journey, I was able to see that when my kids challenged me uh, by being anxious themselves, I came back to see, okay, how am I teaching my child anxiety? Because I'm, I am choosing anxiety to respond to certain situation. My child has learned this, so I need to choose a new way. So when I work with my kids, when I support my kids, when she's going through, my youngest daughter has a personality that attracts a lot of anxiety. I observe first my own anxiety that comes up as she's anxious, my own helplessness that I feel as she goes into her anxious pattern and, and emotional ups and downs. I observe that first. There's power in observing me because then from that point, I can support her. I can't support her as an anxious parent. Anxious parents cannot support anxious child. Yeah. Anxious parents are responsible for anxious child. Mm -hmm. So that's the cycle that we need to break. And who breaks it is the parent. It's the responsibility of the parent. I would, uh, I, I, I find a lot of, parents feel very challenged when I say it's your responsibility. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's a lot for them. It goes, takes them back into anxiety cycle. Oh my God, it's up to me. So I refrain from using that word responsibility. It's a okay. choice. It's a choice. Um, so it's being passed on for generations. When a child is born, a new parent will be anxious. What do we do? How do we raise? Am I doing it right? Especially when you live in a suburb or a society, uh, your neighbors one child goes to uh, a private school and the other child goes to a public school and your child goes to a public school, there will be differences over there, right? And, and when parents talk, there are things that they learn. So the, the public school parent might be thinking, am I, doing, am, I not, uh, uh, am I not doing wrong by putting my child into public school? I think my child should go to a private school. Are these kind of things that are the competitions we are talking about here? No, I don't see them yeah. as competition. It's all a choice. It's a choice of how you see it. Mm -hmm. um, I I think that's a lot culture driven. Okay. Yes. That, you know, my child goes to, it's a sense of difference to know that I'm separate. I'm better than I'm, I'm all of us just wanting to recognize our own unworthiness. That goes no way. Oh, thanks Takes for clarifying no that because um, that's one thing which I was thinking that is that one of those reasons why people are, why the parents are anxious. So Yolanda, let's dive into the five tips on anxiety and depression that we spoke that we will Ooh. be covering. Yes. Lovely. So I guess what I really want to, uh, to, 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 to kind of just bring into precedence first off is how, um, uh, anxiety, parent, how anxiety uh, affects a parent's parenting experience, if you if you like to call it. Um, just to acknowledge that, uh, as we parent a anxious child, we can experience a lot of frustration. So acknowledge that there's a lot of frustration. It is not easy to uh, and really. Um, seeing it for what it is, because we try to, we can go, the reason I'm pointing this out, otherwise we can go into patterns of judgment, judging ourselves. Uh, a lot of society and culture has taught us to question our own selves or what have I done wrong that I deserve this or that I have been given this kind of child. And we take a lot of self judgment. So really to, in order to be able to effectively parent an anxious child is to recognize where we are at. Uh, to feel into to feel what comes up for ourselves, um, the frustration we feel around it, and it's very valid frustration. It's very it does take and demand a lot of of, of, of us. Uh, it is a lot of disappointment that can go that can come along with it. That parents can feel uh, disappointed in their child for being this way. 
and disappointed in themselves. There's a lot of worry. Uh, judgment, like I mentioned, is also a big one. So recognizing all of that is very key uh, for this journey. So that's the first uh, point, acknowledge the frustration. It's not, we haven't even got oh, to the haven't. tips yet. Okay. I just want you to understand that this is, I want parents to, to, to recognize where they are at. Yeah. So this is all us seeing it as a challenge. So what I want to do now is to challenge the parent to see their challenge as an opportunity. Okay. Opportunity to build stronger connection, opportunity to connect within themselves, opportunity to rise over other challenges in their lives as they address this challenge with their child, which is so close to their heart and so important to them. Because the way we do one thing is the way we do all things. If we can approach challenges as in a way of seeking of seeking it and seeking the opportunities that lie within it, we find it. What we seek, we find. It's a rule of life. Yeah, lovely. Um, the other thing I want to um, cover here is that um, is to really understand what anxiety is. Does it if interfere with your child's day to day life? Because often parents are so anxious within themselves that they see so much anxiety in their child and they want to fix the child. However, I just want to give some perspective of what is, are you really raising an anxious child? And some questions you can ask to answer that is, does it, um, is it uh, interfering with their day-to-day -day, uh, anxiety uh, activities? Um, and, um, uh, you know, it is, it differs age with different ages. You can have different types of anxiety issues along with, um, uh, with teenagers to what you experience uh, with younger, with younger kids. So really one important question is really, does it interfere with who they are, with their social uh, interactions in their day-to-day uh, -day, uh, living in their, in their routines? How is that affecting? And so just to scale that from a scale of zero to 10, how much is that affecting? So is this really, is your child really anxious? Is they, do you take ownership of parts of it that come from you? Identify where you are projecting it. Yeah. Got it. yeah, and with that, we can go into some five tips of how we can support our anxious child. Yes, please. Tip number one is to validate their feelings. Validate, validate their feelings. Hear. Hear them. Don't minimize their feelings. Don't shut them off. Validate. And in the same way, validate your own feelings. That's why I started off by saying, Acknowledge the disappointment, acknowledge the frustration, validate your feeling. Very important first tip. Yeah. Uh, as you're validating, along with this tip of validating your, your, your feelings comes uh, coping ahead. Anticipate your child's behavior. In order to really validate them, you need to anticipate. You know, their, and you already know, you are the best person that knows their pattern. Anticipate it, be ready ahead, step, of, step ahead. Don't be surprised and shocked all the time. It's the same pattern. Trust yourself. You got this. You know their behavior. Anticipate it. You know that if I uh, push my child to do something new, they're going to retaliate. So accept it. Anticipate it. It really supports them in supporting their, um, their, uh, supporting their anxiety. And it also um, um, conveys to them your confidence in yourself as their parent. Wow. They really uh, would they kids are really benefited by being one of the biggest gifts we can give our kids is the gift of her as a parent that is confident in themselves and absolutely trust themselves. Great support and security yeah. for an uh, anxious child. Excellent. Tip number two is support them through acceptance and confidence. So confidence in your child's strength. Know what your child's strengths are. They are there. Magnify them. What we magnify amplifies in them. And avoid asking questions. Are you okay? Is everything okay? What can I do? Oh. It's just, if you're just um, amplifying their lack of confidence yeah. in themselves. And it shows to them that, that you are it's like anxious triggering. about them, which is amplifying. Yeah, like triggering to think more, oh, something's wrong with me. It's getting them to, yeah, yeah. To, to really focus on the problem. 
Yeah. Cool. So, so avoid some... going into those patterns. So pick that up where that happens and, 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 and refrain from that. Trip no, tip number three is to break the brain's pattern. So the, the reason why we go into anxiety is because it's our human pattern of fight or flight. Yeah. And if we can see that for what it is, and the best way to break this pattern is through our breath. Come back to our breath. It breaks the pattern. Breath is such a powerful tool, but we are not willing to accept it as a powerful tool because it's too simple. We want something hard. We're so trained for hard, hard, hard. We come into the world with a breath. To start with, we leave this life with a breath. It's, there's a reason why it's the first thing and the last thing because it is so important what we need to stay so connected with through our entire life. It breaks the brain's pattern. Another way of breaking the brain's pattern is by asking questions, getting curious. Hmm, why am I feeling that way? Why did my child ask this? Just asking yourself, what is this? What is my child trying to say really? What is their core need? What is it that they're asking me really? They might be playing out this whole tantrum, but become curious. What is it really underneath it all that they are seeking? Have I given them my love and connection? Have they felt reassured? Have I come into my breath, been present with them completely? Or have I been worried about all these other things? So when we become curious, we break the pattern of our old self. So break the brain's pattern. Yeah. Tip number four is to tune into the body. The body has all the answers. And what do we do as we tune into the body? We ask, uh, what does this feel like? Because our body knows, it holds emotion. We have been resisting feeling. And as we resist, what we resist persists. So we stay stuck in anxiety. We stay stuck in negative behaviors because we are resisting. And what we really need to resist, what, what we really need to come back to is to tune back into the body and allow ourselves to feel. It's okay to feel. Where in my body do I feel it? Acknowledge it, feel it, breathe, come back to your breath. And share your journey with your child. Share with your child what's coming up for me. Example? I said to my daughter, I'm feeling, I, I feel your anxiety. I'm feeling your anxiety and I'm going to hold space for myself. It's bringing up my own stuff. I have a memory of my own mom saying this to me. And I have so much love for you that you show this to me. Break the pattern. Tune back into the body. And when you do that, you're allowing your child to tune into her body too. There's times that I've sat at the edge of, the, of my bed with my daughter, hold her hands and said, let's just breathe and feel this. And we've just sat and we've cried and allowed. And then we became in the next instant, just so happy, jumping in joy, did nothing just connected, allowed, because we are all pure at the core, we are love. And it's such a deep level of love and connection we can feel with another person when we just allow and not want to prove. And we have all this language of guilt, not being good enough. Am I doing the right thing? Am I doing the wrong thing? All the other person is really asking for is love and connection. So tune into the body. Yeah, share your personal experience to tune into the body. It holds all the golden keys. Yeah. And you. tip number five is to recognize the critical role of the parent. Recognize the critical behavior. role of the parent. Role. How critical is your role as a parent to your child's upbringing and growth and, and like we were saying before parents are really afraid that they have this responsibility they feel this whole burden and it adds to their anxiety it adds to their overwhelm but that's a choice so overwhelm is a choice seeing it as a challenge is a choice it's a perspective it's a perception which is why I'll come back and tell you that this Friday I'm running a master class in my group the empowered parents group that is called role of perception in parenting very powerful for us to come back and understand our own perception. And we can shift that by choosing to recognize our role and seeing it as coming back to ourselves by modeling healthy behavior. 
questioning how we are managing our own anxiety. Are we holding space for our own emotions as anxiety is coming up? How to remain calm and not feed off your child's anxiety because your child is expressing anxiety. Like I mentioned, this wishes circle. Your anxiety comes up, your child plays out anxiety, their anxiety then triggers your anxiety. And then we are living for years and generations together in anxious patterns, not really enjoying life, not really enjoying connection, not really enjoying and, um, and uh, being your own highest joyful self because that's what your child is really challenging you to. Our kids are joyful. They're so connected. They don't believe in limitations. So connect to them where they are at and we won't need to create these human beings that we have become that are so anxious and so highly strung. If we just drop ourselves down, they've got the answers. They are the answer. Yes. Their true natural state of love and joy is the answer that we are seeking. So they are here to teach us. We are not teaching them anything. Yeah. They are the ones teaching us. Excellent. They're teaching us. We are not even looking at what they're giving us because we think we know it all. You know, <laughs> I know, right? So the five tips today we learn is validate the feelings, uh, support them through acceptance and confidence, break the brain's pattern, tune into the body, recognize the critical role of being a parent. Yeah. Wow. Thank you okay. so much, Yolanda. These are the tips a parent definitely needs and a, a parent or, a, or anybody who wants to become a parent, you know, if they know that Absolutely. beforehand, they tune their mind accordingly. I love it when parents come to me, be, when, you know, not even parents as yet. And they want to know this work and um, want to be on the right path. They make, I say the child, their future child has chosen that because they don't want to come into the drama of this world. No. no. So as their souls come into the world, they have chosen for that parent to be aligned to themselves so that they can raise them completely aligned and none of that chaos and, and BS. Yeah. Yes. I say to my kids, I would never be this person. This is not who I was here to be. You guys have got great paths ahead of you, which is why you all chose me to completely change my path because they need me to step up. We cannot give to our kids what we don't have. So I needed to give to myself in order to be that parent that they need for their life's journey. So I'm asking the parents there today, are you aligned to what your kids need you to be? Because they called you, they chose you. So stop asking yourself, are you the perfect parent? Or stop feeling guilty because you are the parent your child chose. Yes. That you are the one. You're already perfect. And your only journey is to see your own perfection. Wow. Thank you so much, Yolanda, for sharing this. Really appreciate it. And always a pleasure talking to you. Thank you.